my name is Kristen. I work for the city and I would love to welcome Joe Via One, who is joining us from Thailand. He's actually in Thailand right now, everybody. So it's almost midnight there, he said, and we're just so honored that he's joining us. Joe is an amazing jeweler. Um, he works at Via One Fine Jewelry and we'll tell you more about that. I'm from Thailand, but I've been living in LA for almost 20 years. Um, I went there for my school, my master degree, and then I got a job, I work, and then I have my own business. But originally I'm from Thailand, um, currently live in Los Angeles. I just happen to be here to visit my family and be able to you know, spend time with them and take a, taking care of them during this time. But um, mainly I best in Los Angeles, yeah. I actually have many kind of mediums. I have, um, if we divide it into categories, I have things that from precious stones to semi-precious stones. And then um, I use mostly wiring technique, um, castings and all that things. But I also do have um, um, metal work as well, like silver and gold plated. Um, and I also, have the fun part, which is the mixed media, which is I'm trying to use things around me or things that I think it would interesting, such as um, I did um, measuring tape, um, the obsession with numbers. We use measuring tape combined with onyx and create the uh, pieces. So the medium that I use is variety from precious to my precious metal until you know, recycle um, materials as well. I don't really know exactly what is, but I knew that since I grew up by, I always drawn to colors. I love colors. Um, and from what my parents told me that I, I always drawn into colors that mostly kids love primary colors, like red, yellow, you know, blue, but I always tends to pick up on on different shades of colors, like muted colors or salmon pink or, you know, dark brown or gray dust. So I think that's how I started as playing. And also another thing that I could say is a sign for me that I'm interested in that is I, the only toy that I play is Lego. And I can actually have by by well when I was young and I was a kid by that time they go have a set they when they come in they come in as a house or they come in as a boat or they come in as um, cars or something but I actually use that and trying to always out of the box create you know um house out from the car models or trying to mix and match up what I have in that Lego box and create so many things. So I think that's probably the first sign showing growing up playing with Lego. That's how that's how I start to feel like I really like to get into art. You know what this is actually very interesting. Um the one and the only from all the generations <laughs> um, of both sides of my parents, both my parents' sides. They're all in finance, they are in medicals, they are engineer, they're in software. I'm still the only one who actually in design business. Because my mom have diamonds business, but I grew up doing the design part for her. And she's a great businesswoman, but she, my mom cannot draw. My mom's not really artistic. Um, so it's very odd. I'm, I'm like the only one in my, in my family that actually in art business. I, I used to be an interior designer. I used to be, um, the retail consultant. I used to work for Macy's as a visual concept designer. I design stores, I design windows, and then my work got published in Vogue Italia. 
then I got a lot of um, retailer contact me and I do start doing consultant and flying all over the world, flipping the stores, designing windows and decorating the store. And, you know, I did that for so many, many years when I start my jewelry business. Um, I would say the first three or four years of my, when I start my jewelry business, I do both with interior design and then jewelry. And then my jewelry business start to get really, you know, take off and, and it, you know, need a lot of, require a lot of time for me. Then I start to fit up from the retail design. And now I'm on the 15th years of my jewelry business. So yes, it is, I used to do interior design and I still do special projects once in a while here and there as a consultant. I, I like to do the interior design for for retails because retail restaurant or thing that's more commercial because I feel like it's it exciting and I love art that more could stimulate people to take an action. I like to see art to be commercial art, how that we could use the art or the beauty on my design to stimulate people to to create business, to not just have them admire it, but they also could take action and is make the difference in business. And I think that's that's what has always been fun part for me. Mostly people always know me as um, statement pieces, big and bold and um, they have story about it. Um, and that always been my signature with any mediums that I would touch, either semi-pressure stone or the recycled plastic bag or something. But it will always have me in that, in each collection. It will represent my kind of bow, bonus and my kind of sense of color that I will mix great colors into it and um, think that people will recognize that this is my piece even though you know they've seen someone's wearing them in the corner of the party but they would know that was me because it's it is it speak really loudly about um, my creativity and the way that I put together things and I think that that's the, my signature about, you know, who I am and speak mostly about my work. Okay, so let's start. This is actually with something that my studio actually in Los Angeles, all my archives and all my materials and I have, you know, some um, workers, my assistant all in LA. but because of the quarantine and the situation that we're in and I'm you know in Thailand and I you know obviously have to extend my trip to stay here so I try to find things around me some of the stone samples that I could take benefits from my moms who are in who is in diamond business or things that I could fly and create something while I'm here so this is something that I'm create create during the quarantine I'm sorry, fresh waterfalls, and then there's custom made crystals, and then there's semi precious stone, and I wind them together. Um, and also, there's some casting, you know, stuff. So, I'm actually have a little create a little small studio at my house, um, doing this time. So, and then, um, this is also speak so much about the what I mentioned about colors, the way that I like to mix color. This is green and purples and blue, you know, so this is some example about how 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 people really perceive um, my work. Um, another piece is, I think it's a good piece to show you guys, is in the same of categories about the colors, it's this piece. Onyx and beaded work and, you know, we have crystals and corridor in here. This is handcraft onyx. So this is also something and everything will all well wrap it. And we have, we wrap them also the part that touched your skin or your garment will wrap it with um, silk. So it will not scratch 
when you put them on. Um, the wiring at either 22 karat gold plated over silver or 14 white gold plated over silver. So yeah, this is another piece that you know speak about speak about my you know the love that I have for colors. Um, then we also have this piece is also you know gold of course. <laughs> this is very you know it's mixed media between glass mm. and you know, we have mother of pearls, we have metals, and we have. Um, Enormous technique that we use to put colors on the metal and you know this is some of the pieces that you know I have made um, I also have one piece another piece I want to show you guys and this is quite fine because it's really light um, it's actually cups um, that make from artificial pearls well, I love things that very architectural thing that you know you can see from different angles from different perspectives and we gonna wear them with this earrings which is one side going into your face another side going into your face so when people saw you from the escalator or from any corners so they can actually see and you know understand the pieces that you wear and they, I think that's how I think about when I design, it's just not only one or two dimensions is needed to make sure that if you take your coat off or when people saw you from the angle that above you or things like that and it's still, the jewelry will still complement your personality and make you shine and I think that, that's very important. This is one, this is more about my um, fly jewelry collection and it shows the technique of my culture of the webbing technique and we use rubies in this so it's actually very you know very gold very golden looking mm -hmm. this whipping technique is the way that people here in thailand weaving using bamboo and create basket here in my culture this is how people do make their basket this is the weaving that they do with the bamboo you mm -hmm. can see that i'm trying to use that because because another thing that I love is traveling and I love each and every culture and I'm trying to reflect that onto my collections as well. Oh, one of the comments that I always get is, is, is to say, oh, everyone, not to say it's beautiful, but everyone some a lot a lot of people say you know oh this is joe's work right this is joe creation people recognize it um and also they feel special they feel like when you they wear my jewelry and they go to the party they go two months or even they go you know grocery shopping they feel that they're beautiful it's there's something about it that they that give them a push um, that make them feel that they are beautiful and it's going to be a good day. And I like it about that because it's not just the way that you create the beautiful things, but it also the energy, the things, because thinking about when you do hand, you hand make doing, you put your energy in, into it. You put your perspective about how you see that piece on the person. They put, you put so much into it. So there's so many energy into that piece. And that piece, that those energy will actually complement with the person who wear it, with the, their personality and their joy, their, their personality and their, you know, their soul. And that's how it shines. And you can tell, you know, one of my favorite moments is to put the necklace onto my client's neck. And when the right piece onto the right person, you can see the sparkle in their eyes, you know that's the right. And it's it's just some, it's just something that you can't explain, but it is so magical um, for you to be able to witness that. And I think that's what um, the best compliment I got is the they feel that my creation could make them connected with that inner and make them feel that feel the best of who they are and i think that that's the best compliment that I, I i got and i'm i'm blessed that i got that a lot from a lot of my fans 
actually do a lot of trunk shows um, with major museums too. Um, like my pieces show in Victorian Albert Museum in London, in Palm Spring Art Museum, in Metropolitan Opera. So we do occasionally we do, um, you know, trunk shows with those. It just tends to be more and more that I'm in the business. I'm tends to do, you know, more and more exclusive collections. And we just launched um, five jewelry collections about four years ago, which is, you know, have been doing very, very well. And um, mostly people will follow me and they try to get an appointment to see me in person when I'm in the city, either in LA or in New York, in Atlanta or, you know, in Washington or whatever. They're trying to make an appointment. And I always, I mean, I always kept my clients list and uh, trying to make them feel special this is this is not the jewelry for everyone and i'm very very okay with that it's not it's not something that anyone could wear but however the person who be able to wear them people collect them i have clients who bought from me since the second month um, in the business until now so basically they've been consistently buying one or two pieces every one or two months for 15 years some of them even have more of my jewelry than me so um i mean the best way to get in touch with me so either social media on facebook or on my website villain1.com that's how we use for communicate with uh, our fans and people of what shows i'm doing and what where i'm gonna do my personal appearance when I'm gonna have a trunk show with any museum like you know Beverly Hill art shows and that's that's I probably think that's probably the best way to keep in touch with it it's kind of treasure hunting kind of way because I don't like to have my pieces everywhere that anyone could get access to that make it too you know too regular for me I want someone that have them, they know that they're they are very, very special to own one of them. I actually have a lot of clients that I see privately that live in Beverly Hills. I have probably almost, I would say almost 40 clients at least that I see like regularly that they are live in Beverly Hills. However, and I live in Los Angeles. However, I do think that um, it was just a great honor, a great opportunity that I get a chance to be in and be able to feature my pieces at the Beverly Hills Art Shows last time in my first time because I feel like high art is, is forever, is unlimited. And when you be able to be in the environment that have so many great artists, you know, pottery, painting, you know, art sculpture, it's just so much, so, so many, it's so overwhelmed with great, beautiful, creative, positive energy. And I feel like that's what creates just a cosmic of positive thought. and and. It just almost like creativity overload, and I feel like that's what make that's what make the shows um, interesting. And even though I already have a lot of fans, I still get a lot of new clients um, from large shows, and reconnected with some of my clients that I haven't seen for so many years. And you know, it was it was it was magical. One of my my experience is the best experience from last show is that I have five of my clients. Um, I was blessed and feel honored that the show gave me the second runner up award for the jury. And I have five, six of my clients helping me pack up my booth and each of them doesn't know each other. And they're all trying to help me pack my booth so I be able to run to accept the award. You know, see for me that's that it that's just something that I could not get it from 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 anywhere. It's the best experience that I ever had um, in terms of doing the shows. And and I think Beverly Hills Art Shows organization has the great criteria in picking up the artists 
uh, people who shows their work. They're all great, great artists. Um, I could not even tell you how much in, how much inspiration that they got. It just almost is everywhere you walk into the shows. You always see something that you were like, oh my god, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. And and it's just a harmony of a great artist and the creativity creativity energy that mix together. And I I could not be you know more honored to be part of it. So. Definitely, this fall, I'm gonna be there again, and it's gonna be fun. Like, yes. I always keep it close to my heart. It's it for me. Experience is something that even more important than how you know business or how many press that you got. I think the experience when you be able to do something that you love, and people appreciate them, and you can do that during, between, with the people that have similarly have energy and i think that 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 is that's just something that is you can't explain but it's the most incredible things that could happen as an artist well actually no my my degree actually my background is i got my bachelor in our time and my um master in interior design however jury is a self-taught because my parents has diamond business in town so i grew up you know seeing jewelry learning about jewelry selling jewelry choosing the stone looking to the diamond you know, learn about stones learn about you know all these things about jewelry including the technique weaving technique wiring techniques since I was a kid so basically doesn't really have exact of particular school I try I might take two class here and there but not particularly going to the school for this it totally self-taught or I grew up with this business and I think it's kind of fun to do that. Why my Lily degree is in advertising and interior design, so I actually could combine three of them. I feel like I did pretty good in combining three of those, you know, dynamic together to create my brand. And um, yes, and I think the most important thing is your is your heart and your soul. If you love something. Um, you will find the way to to learn about it and try to be expert in that category. Carpet metal wool is actually kind of hard, but I love wiring um, because I kind of feel like it's I could imagine and they can go you know the direction I want it the fastest. And almost the easiest, you know. Like for example, like this, this, this cup, right? So after I like, weaving it with the wiring, I could turn it to the left, or I could turn it to the right. I can have it bend down. I can have it bend up. And I think that's probably my my favorite um, medium to work with. And um, I like things that challenge me, like. You know, when I talk about the measuring tape, like I feel like things that you never thought that measuring tape will could create and doing of making something so couture looking. See, those another thing that I love about using to use in my medium is to challenge myself of using things that I think that has potential, and people never thought that that medium. To actually be able to do something so beautifully, or to be able to represent something as a high art, and I be able to do it. Those are those are another thing that I love to work with. So my answer will be wiring and um, challenging recycles or mixed media that you could use in your life, and then that also lead to what. You have to wait to see what you're gonna see. What I will bring this fall, and I'm telling you, it will be very, very fun. And you will not believe that. How could I do that? <laughs> well, we cannot wait to see you. And thank you so much for joining us, Joe, all the way from Thailand. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Honored. Thank you. Thank you.